Hey, y'all. I know it's been a minute. It has been a hot minute. And y'all have got to see me. And you guys have to hear me. Um, for those that have been watching the community tab, y'all know that I got uh, hit up with COVID this week. What I thought was the flu turned out to be a little worse <laughs> for wear. Um, I spent the next five days laid up in bed. And... I'm finally feeling better. I'm still a little congested, but day by day, getting better and better. I thought I would come on and kind of get used to the swing of things again, as far as at least producing one video for y'all week and then doing the live stream Monday. We have a lot of things to cover Monday, so I thought, why not have a little fun updating y'all on some of the other people we've discussed on this channel. Now, y'all see the crazy face that I have on the screen right now. This is Joni. Joni Marie Two, also known as Autism Mom Life on TikTok. We've talked about her before. I gave I gave you guys the rundown of kind of everything I knew on them. And I, I've been following here and there. I haven't caught very many live streams, but luckily the wonderful people of the Snark subreddit page have caught a few and recorded key moments that they thought were share worthy. Unfortunately, there are minors involved, so I will not be sharing that content. If you want to go seek that content out, by all means, visit the subreddits. <laughs> it's public. There's nothing I can do about you visiting that. And it's not like it's hidden. It's, I mean, if you're going to find it, you're going to find it. But I will not be showing minor children on my page because I talk about adult content adult themed content and I, I'm I'm not just gonna show other people's kids on my thing. I'm if I'm not gonna show my own, I'm not gonna show other people's. So having said that, Joni has been in a little bit of hot water again for a multitude of reasons. Uh apparently Cash is now in an ABA treatment with a facility. He's not living there but he's getting treatment from people and has um caregivers that help Joni out now that will be visiting their house to help out treatment with his therapy this may take a little bit of the burden off of her and help her find some better coping situations that doesn't involve putting a camera in her child's face as they're having a breakdown or a meltdown of any kind having said that what caused the need for getting this fast-tracked because Joni had taken him out of this program before and thought she could do it better that she could provide the ABA treatment that he needed on her own that wasn't quite working out he's getting older he's getting stronger he's getting bigger <laughs> I don't know for how much longer she's going to be able to handle him without the help of somebody or a system of people um her son, her autistic son, ended up having a little bit rougher of an altercation with her than usually is shown through Joni's live streams and through her recorded content that she posts on her TikTok page. And a lot of people took notice and were concerned because this was turning into almost a, a DV situation. It was that aggressive. And it was a meltdown over food. Food is his biggest trigger. And it seems like the biggest issue in that house is not having a certain schedule for things and either eating too late or not being mindful of a schedule that her son wishes to keep. Now, not long after this, there was another situation where the daughter, uh, she's probably around the age of my probably between the ages of my oldest and my youngest, had voiced uh, wanting to go for a sleepover at a friend's house during a live stream. It was in the evening. 
Joni, of course, was live streaming while do while having this conversation with her daughter. And out of camera, something was done and the daughter started crying. Now, while still on live stream, the daughter mentioned that Joni had struck her against the head. And that's why she was upset, not upset over the fact that she was being told that she couldn't go to the sleepover because Joni doesn't allow sleepovers, which in this day and age, I'm not going to hold that against her. I would not allow my child to sleep over at somebody's house, not even if I thought I knew them, because you never really know somebody. And that's your baby. That's your child. That's your everything. So mm, not going to happen. <laughs> so I'm not going to hold that against her. but. Whether or not there was a physical altercation there is yet to be said. It could have been a call of attention to the daughter, wanting attention outside of having to be live broadcasted, especially talking about a sensitive situation where she wanted to go to a sleepover and was told that she couldn't. But then we also threw remarks about the father in there saying, well, would you rather go to a sleepover or go to your father's? Kind of taking a dig at the at the father. Um. All around not cool. <laughs> and a lot of people voiced their concerns on what was going on there. And Joni abruptly ended the live stream um, to address the situation because she knew that it shown her in a bad light, which I mean, good on her for noticing that because where is this? Where is this uh cognizant of thought while her son is, you know, beating the shit out of her? I don't know. I have no idea. But at least she had the wherewithal to end the live and address it as opposed to keep live streaming and ignore it. <laughs> so that's that's the hot water that she's in at the moment. She's still dealing with people calling Child Protective Services on her frequently. Uh, I think that's just going to be the <laughs> the outcome of her broadcasting her life as openly as she does and not addressing certain things that need to be addressed when it comes to the safety of her children. But if you put your shit online, you're bound to get blowback from some area. So I, I, I'm not sorry about it. Now we've gotten her out of the way. I haven't seen anything new of Willow having any updates. As far as I'm concerned, their cat is still missing and that's it. Like they have not made any kind of effort to relocate their their cat that's missing. So it is what it is. Now, as far as anybody else, uh, let's check on Lily. I always go to the snark subreddits first and foremost. Most of the time, they reference what they are talking about when it comes to something that's been done. So I can reference so that I make sure that they are being truthful in what they're telling. And if it can't be referenced, I just gloss over it because it's just hearsay, right? Gotcha. And the Mohinka, how fishy is it? Is there like fish sauce in it in there? But ultimately, I think chances are if someone says, I don't want to date a trans person flat out, there's probably some transphobia. And, and I don't mean like going to be at an anti-trans rally kind of transphobia. I mean more like internalized. And then we have videos like this from Lily. Uh, this was caught during a live stream. Lily doesn't technically upload very regularly on her TikTok. Most of the time she live streams and then clips from those live streams um, to post on her TikTok. Uh, also, her live streams are all subscriber only that are allowed to comment or have any kind of conversation with her. So it's a pay to interact moment. It's whatever. You can do what you want. You're a content creator. Obviously, it does well for her. Uh, but Lily is known to have a lot of rage baiting moments. And this is no different. I, I don't know what else we can expect from her at this point. It's all to elicit a reaction out of you and it's all translated we're gonna play the video and we're gonna talk about it now before i play the remainder of this video 
The question that's pinned, that's clipped off in the screen grab that I have up there for you guys is, do you think it's transphobic if someone doesn't want to date a trans person? And this is what Lily is answering. Date a trans person flat out. There's probably some transphobia. And, and I don't mean like going to be at an anti-trans rally kind of transphobia. I mean more like internalized transphobia, which is way more subtle. Whoa, your ex, we were... I don't know, my ex we was talking to is coming to your family event. Wow. How do you feel about that? Uh, so, so like, if you know, someone doesn't want to date a trans person, maybe because they're worried about how people might perceive them, right? Like, she dated, she's dating a trans person, like, right? Like, people might judge, and that could be a reason, right? And that is coming from internalized transphobia. They don't want to date a trans person because they think, like, oh, are trans people, like, aren't they kind of weird, right? There's a million different reasons that not wanting to date a trans person could be stemming from the wrong places. And only a few reasons why it might be like a non-transphobia thing. I'm not, I don't, I don't want to say outright. Um, I really don't want to say outright because it's totally possible that there's a good reason for it. But uh, I would say 90% of the time, it's probably not coming from a good place because we're just normal people. Um, and like attractiveness is such a so many things that go into attraction and it's not just there's no like attraction is so non-objective anyways the fact that she's constantly saying like if you don't find trans people <laughs> attractive to where you'd want to date them you're transphobic is like really shitty as a really shitty take but again this is lily's content to elicit strong feelings it's rage baiting uh, we are now kind of getting that from Amberlynn and Chantal here lately, so we're not foreign to this, but the whole take on, like, if you wouldn't date a trans person, you're transphobic. No, bitch. We just have preferences. Everybody has preferences. Some people like fat people. Some people don't. It doesn't make them fat phobic. It just makes them not attracted to fat people. That's fine. Um, you're allowed to have a preference. But like, if you're not attracted to somebody that if you are a lesbian and you go to tra <laughs> a trans woman and they still have an appendage that you are totally against and couldn't see yourself with and they don't plan on removing it, I'm sorry, it it's not compatible. It's okay. It's okay for you to not be compatible in that way. You you don't want to force a relationship that can't be healthy and you know whether you want to believe it or not there has to be some form of form of intimacy for it to be compatible you have to have, there has to be some level of attraction there has to be some level of respect there has to be some level of something there that brings you two together yes there's companionship but i feel like a lot of the times that's on a different <laughs> level than romantic relationships you can have companionship but there's romance this is we're talking about romantic relationships you're allowed to have a preference and it's okay pushing this rhetoric that it makes you transphobic or homophobic or whatever is so damning and so i think backward thinking the world is not black and white and so for you to obviously in this situation you're trying to push that the world is not black and white. It, there's gray areas and you are making it black and white by giving this either you are or you aren't. Some people are, are just, they don't care if you are or you aren't. But others have preferences on who they want to date. It doesn't make you one way or the other. <sighs> Moving on from Lily because Lily is very uh, baity. So in other news, Miss Amberlynn went to Pride. Uh, this was recorded the 2nd of June. Amberlynn went to Pride, I'm assuming in Oklahoma City, with her mom. Mama Lynn joined and we found out through Amber outing her. It was probably pre-planned, I'm assuming, and they just made it seem like it was a big issue. But that Amberlynn's mom is also uh tempted fate with women and had a five-year relationship with a woman um in her past uh 
we learned that Mama Lynn is pan, that she doesn't put a label on what she is. She loves who she loves. Doesn't matter. Man, woman, nothing, which is fine. I find it weird that they had to film this whole thing. And then Amber uh, coyishly playing with her mom's hair, saying that she forgot how to fucking put hair in a ponytail, even though doesn't she live in a fucking bun 24-7? How do you not know how to fucking put people's hair in a ponytail? They went out to eat. We have a new gay Bessie that sounds like Jordy. <laughs> Lordy, it's Jordy, which was wild. I was like, oh, that voice sounds familiar, but we know it's not Jordy. Uh, but like the voice was giving Jordy. Um, they went out to eat and Amber had her uh, trusty salmon and mashed potatoes. This girl uh, is <laughs> like habitually ordering salmon and mashed potatoes every time she fucking goes out i don't know what it is uh, we also found out that she's gaining weight on ozempic i love that for her uh this was supposed to be her magic pill and lo and behold we are fucking representing <laughs> we are representing um i i just Wow, uh, now we're not weighing ourselves as often because the scale is triggering. You know, everything is triggering. We enjoyed Pride because that was our happy moment in our bubble and had a bunch of people take pictures with us. Will we see them around Twitter? Eventually, I'm sure we will. Uh, but yeah, it was just, I don't know if it's just me. And maybe it's the cynic in me having been um bisexual for so long and in the gay atmosphere for so long <laughs> and being from a even though I'm around the same generation but uh, like from the older generation 38 years old <laughs> but Amber Lynn gives off new gay so hard like baby gay even though she's been gay to her admission like her whole life but I'm like why is everything so cringy with her? Why is everything like it's day one, finding out, coming out? You know, <laughs> why is it like this? I don't know. I don't know if it's just me, but it comes off to me very cringy. But in no way, shape, or form am I um, saying that I'm the benchmark for what what gay people should be. But I'm like, I'm so over the, like, over the top discussion on being gay <laughs> at this point we've known for 10 years you're good like let's not make it some big like shock value thing your mom has slept with a woman and been with a woman for five years okay everybody's had everybody at one point in their life a good majority of women have had the dual experience large number i'm not saying everybody but a large number of women um cool so moving on Chantal has been doing things swimmingly using content like in the matter of a week from health scare changing our eating habits working out to limit our carbs we're not removing them totally and then uh, drinking of a fiber drink that is only three grams of fiber before every meal to combat the amount of carbs that she's ingesting on a daily basis now where we've kind of switched off here we've had a few rages between that time and now and then a complete shutdown to where we offered that we are no longer going to be sharing anything about our health our personal lives nothing only going to be eating on camera and doing the occasional vlog with Sala okay and then we had a live stream where at the end of raging and everything um we abruptly ended the live stream with a oh shit news and then never addressed that um saying that they were okay and then we just have just gotten multiple uploads of just mukbangs everything from chinese food to Wendy's. <laughs> and then she live streamed today smoking on a hookah, looking like the fucking caterpillar. 
Alice in Wonderland. <laughs> I don't know what era we're in at this point. It it changes daily because Chantal is in her manic state right now. We don't know what we're going to do next. And it could be it's a hut mukbang. It could be a rage. It could be my blood sugar is 430 and uh, I'm about to be in a diabetic, get a diabetic coma. Like, who knows what's going to be next? Um, the last live stream, she seemed pretty catty. Um, I don't know. I, I honestly don't know what's going to happen with her. A lot of people are speculating that the Kuwaiti government is kind of um, her on the down low right now. And also because she's going to have to do a visa run here soon. Uh, they're speculating that, you know, maybe her visa status is going to be in question here very soon. And her and Sala's little love nest may be in jeopardy. I don't know. Um, we'll find out, <laughs> I guess. In the meantime, we're just, we're just watching, seeing what's going to happen. Uh, if it's one thing we know about Chantal, she can't stay off the internet for very long, as we've seen. And she can't not talk about things outside of food for very long. I think she gets bored of it. And I think the only reason that she doesn't want to talk about her health and shit anymore is because she got so much pushback after showing everybody her blood sugar being so high. And now that she's medicated and thinks that she's regulating it okay, she's able to eat whatever she wants again without any repercussion from that. Which everybody <laughs> that I saw in the comments was asking for her to test her blood sugar live again, but she said she said she won't ever do that again. Um, I don't know. I don't know what'll happen from here. I'm looking forward to the live stream Monday. We're gonna discuss a lot of new people and then revisit um, Bad Barbie. I think that's what her name was, Bad Barbie. Let me look at my bookmarks real quick. Pretty Barbie, my bad. Um, we're gonna take another look at Lisa Richards. We're gonna take a look at a new um TikToker that I found that is grifting alongside like Lisa Richards and them, like almost on the same level. Um, they have pets that are in jeopardy of not being taken care of properly because their funds at a level that they're able to take care of the <laughs> the pets at. Um, I don't know. We'll see what happens. I want it to be fun Monday because I've been gone for so long, but we'll see how it goes. Um, I'm still a little bit congested, so I don't know how long it will be. I'm going to try to stretch it to like maybe two, two and a half, three hour mark. But again, I don't know. It just depends on how I'm feeling. <laughs> but um, as I said, we're just going to have fun. And I'm going to thank my channel members, Kalari, Fish, and joy thank y'all for being the first people to subscribe to memberships on my channel i appreciate it very much y'all always have a shout out on my uh as far as anytime i live stream and anytime i record content it's going to be right on my videos well as i'm going to start shouting out members beginning of any of my future recorded content i just think you all need to be First, foremost, for <laughs> as you guys are appreciated, and also notice an influx in subscribers. So that's also awesome. Thank you guys for subscribing and taking a chance on me. Hopefully, I'm everything you guys <laughs> hoped for. If not, I'm sorry about it. Uh, all I can do is do better next time. <laughs> but at any rate, thank you all for taking the time out and watching this video. And I'll see you guys on Monday night for those that want to join in on the conversation and have a little bit of fun.